Welcome back everyone. Today we have a lesson to introduce scale drawings as well as to discuss what scale factor is and how it's related to making scale drawings. So I want to introduce this topic by going to some real world applications. So in real life, um, some focus for scale drawings and the importance of scale drawings relates to blueprints and construction, as well as something that you might be familiar with using your phones or technology through um, finding your directions um, through GPS systems. So for blueprints for construction, um, if you are an architect designing a new building and you have everything in your mind as far as what you want to construct or um, create, um, you need to communicate those visions to your builders and your contractors, and that's where scale drawings come in. And a blueprint is essentially a detailed scale drawing that shows the dimensions, layouts, and features of the building. And contractors will be looking at that blueprint and trying to understand what you're looking to design and construct, um, where each wall, window, door, um, and other structural things are are going to be placed and what size and what shape they should be and how everything should come together. As far as um, something you might be more familiar with, um, using a little bit more um, on a regular basis perhaps to get around would be GPS. So when we're looking for navigating, um, maybe in the car or maybe just going from one friend's house to another and you have the address in mind, you can plug that address into your GPS app or app navigation system and you can get from one place to another. Well, you know that what you're seeing on your screen is a scaled down version of the real map or the real roads that you are upon. So scale drawings are also used um, for navigation. And basically, um, it's GPS is calculating your position and it's plotting um, all of that on that digital map and having you look at some real time guidance, I guess you could say, as you're getting from place to place. All right, another um, few pieces of background information. Um, let's talk about what is a scale drawing. A scale drawing can be an enlarged or a reduced drawing, but it has to be proportional to the original object or map or figure. Otherwise, it's not really kept in scale. So let's look at this example with Nancy here. Nancy made a scale drawing of a house, and the scale she used was two centimeters equals seven feet. That means for every two centimeters on her drawing, it was supposed to be representing a seven foot actual distance. So if the height of the house in the scale drawing was 70 meters instead of two, uh, I'm sorry, 70 centimeters instead of two centimeters, what was the actual length of the house? So if you had to solve a problem like this, maybe some of you can kind of come up with a method that can change those two centimeters into 70 and then relate it instead of to seven feet how many feet is that for real? So you may already be thinking this out in your head if you wanted to even pause the video and see if you could figure this out before we get there together, that would be just fine. All right, basically, if you were able to think of a solution, did you possibly use some kind of ratio um, and proportion to solve this out? What you could do is identify and place the value of x, like a variable letter x, to find the unknown height of the real house. Basically, what, what the question is asking, what was the actual height of the house? Well, that's your mystery number. So that's your x. So you're going to let x be the unknown height of that actual or real house. So what you could do is first think of that scale that scale of two centimeters equals seven feet as a ratio. So we could use a ratio and put seven centimeters over seven feet and set up a fraction ratio. Well, we also know one more piece of information and that's the 70 centimeters that was going to be used for the height of the house. And then centimeters over feet in the other ratio, we could see 70 centimeters going over an X or mystery number of feet. 
You'll notice here I've got these, um, I guess you could say oval shapes crisscrossing on each of these ratios. Notice the equal sign between the two ratios. That's called a proportion when you have one ratio equaling another. And we can use the cross products method to solve here. Sometimes you can multiply across, multiply across, and other times it might just be more easy to use the cross products method when things are not even number kind of multiples. So we could take 2 times x in our diagonal here and set it equal to 7 times 70. So that comes out to 2x equals 70 times 7. So 2 times the mystery number x equals 490. And if we just divide each side of the equal sign by 2's, we get x alone. So we're solving for x. And we're dividing the 490 by the 2. And you're get, getting 245 feet. So 70 centimeters represents 245 feet. So therefore, the height of the real house is 245 feet. All right, so um, just a few things to keep in mind. Tips for solving proportions. It's always great to have little tips because usually tips come from knowing where people truly go wrong in their path to solving a problem. And um, just as a math teacher, and maybe the more you work with math, you can identify your errors and then catch yourself from making those same mistakes again. Who wants to keep making the same mistake over and over again in their life? But rather we learn from our mistakes. So some tips for solving proportions. Number one, any units expressed in a proportion must be consistent. Meaning that if you are going to, in our original ratio, set up centimeters over feet, on the left side of that proportion, you should have set up centimeters over feet in the right side of the proportion. So it's important to express the units next to each number, whether it be centimeters or feet, but also to be consistent on one side of the ratio or proportion to the other. When units are used, the units of the numerators must match and the units of the denominators must match. Again, it's the consistency that's important. And then in any true proportion, the cross products, diagonal being multiplied, anything on the diagonals that's multiplied has to be consistent and match. So the cross products have to be equal. Match means equal. And then one last thing to point out on this sheet here is um, when we're talking about scales and scale factor, a scale is used, um, it's a ratio that's used to define the relationship between the actual figure and the drawing or between the actual figure and the model. Why would you do scale drawings? Scale drawings allow us to accurately represent sites, spaces, buildings, and details to a more practical size before we begin to design the actual space. All right, next up, we're gonna take some notes here on your handouts for scale factor and do some guided practice problems. All right, terms to know. Okay, vocabulary. We don't require a lot of vocabulary quizzes and tests in our math course here this year. From time to time, yes, and it's very, but it's very important to know and be able to understand and communicate using these terms. So some terms to know here for scale factor and scale drawings. The factor or multiplier used to enlarge or shrink an image or a structure in order to create a replica on a larger or a smaller scale is called scale factor. Okay, so scale factor is the factor, which is a multiplier that's used to either make bigger or shrink down an image and create um, a replica or something on a larger scale or smaller scale than the real thing. Scale factors also known, and you've heard this terminology used before in our prior lessons, it's also known as the constant of proportionality. Scale factor can be calculated similar to how we calculated constant of proportionality, which was like unit rates, 
Remember, they have different types of units set against each other, and we divided. So instead of doing y divided by x, we'll think of x as our original, which are our old measurements, and we'll think of y as our new measurements. So we are still doing y over x, or y divided by x as ratio. So the scale factor is your constant of proportionality, the lowercase letter k, and it's your new measurement over your old measurement as a ratio. Notice I have put an oval around the, word, the letters n and o. One little catchy thing that you could think of for scale factor is just say no. Just say no, n over the original. Okay, so now for each of the examples below, we're going to find the scale factor that was applied to the lengths of each figure to produce the lengths of another figure. So it looks like they're going from figure A, and they're trying to increase the sides proportionally to make figure B. So we're going to make sure we're going to correspond or compare the corresponding lengths to one another. So if we have to find the scale factor, I highlighted here the directions, find the scale factor that was applied to make this figure A into figure B. It looks like it doubled in size, right? Do you see the side length of 2 and 4 and the 1 that went to a 2 from figure A to B? Well, that's because the ratio of new over original was 4 over 2, or you could have used the sides 2 over 1. So look at how I've color-coded things here. So what is the scale factor? Well, let's simplify the fraction 4 over 2. Let's simplify the fraction 2 over 1. Well, it simplifies to a 2. So what scale factor was used, what multiplier was used to take us from figure A to figure B? It looks like they doubled the side lengths, right? So the scale factor is a 2. That means that they doubled it. In the next example, example number two, we're still going to use the concept of new measurement divided by old measurement. All right, the new measurement is figure B. The old measurements were in figure A. So what does it look like it's happened here in figure A to figure B? If it started with the big one, figure A, and now we see figure B, what, what does it look like it happened? Oh, it looks like it shrunk. Okay, so we can see bigger silence in figure A, and now it reduced or shrunk down to figure B. Okay, well, what's the new figure? It was a 3 and a 2 for the base and the height of the triangle. So the new was a 3, or maybe using the green number there, the 2. So when the new goes in the numerator. The new goes in the numerator. So if I look at 3, I want to look at the corresponding side length it started out, which was a 6, the old. 3 over 6, or look at the heights of those triangles, 2 over 4. 3 over 6, oh, that simplifies to 1 half. 2 over 4 also simplifies to 1 half. So guess what the scale factor is here? 1 half. We just simplify the fractions or the ratios. All right, so now um, what you're going to do each time is to pause the video and see if you can maybe work out some of these problems on your own and then come back to the video and see how you did by listening. All right, well, for number one, I noticed the figure got bigger. So the scale factor that was used must have been something, a multiple, that got the side length from a 2 to a 3. So 2 times something equals 3. Okay, well, if we use new over original, or new over old, what we could see here would be a 3 over a 2. So 3 halves. Well, if we simplify 3 halves, we would get 1 and 1 half, or 1.5 is the scale factor there. Okay, in number two, 
if they're going to produce each figure B from figure A, let's look what happened in number two. Okay, I see a side length of 10 on that, I guess a semicircle, down to a 7. So something shrunk down. Okay, so new. The new dimension versus the old was your 7 over a 10. Okay, that looks like 7 tenths. Or the fraction can be turned into a decimal by taking 7 divided by 10, 7 tenths, right? 0 0.7 is also the way we write the decimal form of 7 tenths. All right, notice the scale factors. If they're smaller than the number 1, it means the figure shrunk. If they're bigger than a number 1, the multiplier used was higher than 1, that means the figure increased in size or grew. All right, now sometimes we use scale factor to find new measurements. Um, they'll tell you, okay, this is the original figure, here's the scale factor, find the new measurements applying that multiplier, that scale factor. So let's look at example one. If a scale factor of k equals 3 is applied to the figure below, fill in all missing side lengths. So what's the process? We multiply every length from the original figure by the scale factor. In this case, the 3. They told us the scale factor was 3. So we're going to multiply by 3. So you could see to get from the small to the big, every side length that corresponds is going to be multiplied by 3. So 5 times 3 is 15 on this slant. The 4 times 3 will give you the 12 on the height of the triangle. And then the 3 times the 3 will give you a 9 for the base of that triangle. So you have a triangle with a base of 9, a height of 12, and a slant height of 15. Let's do one more example and apply a scale factor. If a scale factor of k equals 1 half is applied to the figure below, fill in all the missing lengths. All right, what happens when scale factor is smaller than 1? Look what's going to happen here. We're going to multiply by that scale factor. It's going to shrink that, I guess, trapezoid here into a smaller scale trapezoid. So you're still going to multiply by the scale factor, and in this case, by 1 half, which will be the same thing as taking half of each value, which means you're dividing by 2. So to cut something in half, it's really like either multiplying by one half or, or multiplying by 0.5 as a decimal instead of a fraction. So every side length has to change and multiply by one half, which is like dividing by two. So what is six times one half? It's three. Half of six is three. Half of 10 is five. Half of 5 is 2 and a half. So, yep, sometimes these side lengths are not going to be perfect whole numbers. And half of 14 is 7. And there you've got your new figures measures. All right, let's move on. Okay, now they're going to give you an old figure and a new figure in each of these numbers 1 through 6, I believe. So we're going to, for each set of shapes, find that scale factor based on the information given, and then we're going to fill in any missing side lengths. Okay, I'm hoping that you pause the video just ever so briefly, possibly to try and figure some of these out on your own, or at least to get familiar with the problems before I am there. That really does help. It's a good little math tip um, to get used to. Just at least give it a try and see if you could figure it out without my help, and then come back for the help. Okay, so remember that K is always your new, your ratio of new measure over the old measure. 
and your new measure is your figure B in this case, your old is figure A. Okay, so let's take any side length that corresponds, two side lengths that correspond, and I can see the 14 and the 7. The 14 is your new, the 7 is your old. What's 14 over 7 simplify to? Simplifies to a 2. Now, just know that, I'm going to change my pen color real quick here. I could have taken um, also instead, oh, no, I couldn't have taken any other corresponding side because it looks like the 4 is going to relate to something here. Okay, well, we've got to increase the size, so take the 4 times that scale factor of 2, and that is an 8. And then lastly, in orange here, I'm looking for this bottom of the triangle. It was something small that, when doubled, made 12. Well, a 6 would go here, right? Because 6 times 2 would get you to that 12. All right, so I think we filled in all the, the missing side lengths. Let's move on to number 4. All right, let's go and think of new over old as our ratio. So figure B in the numerator and figure A measurements in the denominator. All right. Um, I'm looking for, first let's find the scale factor. So I would take maybe the 7 and the side length in the old that corresponds. The 7 is the new, the 21 is old, and I would simplify 7 over 21. So I could divide those by 7s and get 1 over 3. 7 over 21 simplifies to 1 third. So the scale factor your k, you're going to put the fraction one-third. One-third of 21 is 7. Or 7 times 3 working backwards gets you to the 21. So we can go backwards and take 8 times 3 and get 24 for the bottom because 24 times one-third is the 8. And then for the top, 18 times one-third Okay, 18 over 1 times 1 over 3 is 18 over 3. And 18 over 3 divide is 6. So it looks like the top number there should be 6. All right, I'd like for you to also now pause the video once again and see if you can figure out number 5 and 6 on your own and come on back. All right, are you ready to go over number 5 and 6 and see how you did? Did you reason your way through and think about your ratio as new over original or old, which is your, in this case, the second figure over the first figure, B over A? Did you then look to see how the 9 compares to the 15 and 9 over 15? If you divide them both by 3s, oops. Divide by 3 and divide this by 3, you will get 3 fifths. So k equals 3 fifths. And 3 fifths of 15 is 9. But now I'm looking for 20. So take 20 times the scale factor of 3 fifths. So 20 over 1 times 3 over 5. Okay, I can cross simplify, and that you should come out to 12. So 20 goes down to a 12. So in this box, you want a 12. How'd you do? How about number six? Change up my colors here. All right, did you get a constant of proportionality or a scale of four? How do I know it's a 4? Well, I see the corresponding side lengths on the same length of each of those shapes, the ones that correspond to one another. The shapes are facing the same direction. It looks like shape A got bigger. So, okay, the multiplier should be a number higher than 1, and it is. The multiplier, also called scale factor, is a 4. So it looks like they took 1 times 4 
to get to this 4 in figure B. So now let's take, go backwards and take 8 divided by 4. Work backwards, then you get a 2. And then going forward, 2 times 4 is 8. All right, going forwards, 1.5 times 4. Did you get 6? Okay, to get from the left side of that shape in figure A to the left side of the shape in figure B, 1.5 times 4 gets you to that 6. All right, so hopefully you did well. We'll have some practice together in class, and we'll see you some, some more for more scale drawing and area types of problems in our next lesson. Thanks for joining me. I'll talk to you soon.